all rivers in nature meander. That means that they wind very slowly. No river is truly straight. If you see a river that is straight, it's probably not a river at all, it's probably a canal. So all rivers are meandering slightly. Now when you've got a meander in a river, or any bend at all in a river, you're going to get um, the river changing speed depending on which side of it you are. We'd call this bit the outside bend. And here, the flow is going to be much faster than the inside bend, which is here. And that's through centrifugal force. That's the force that throws things outwards as they go round a bend. A little bit like if you were on a roller coaster and you went round a, a sharp bend, you'd be thrown to the outside. Um, where the river is flowing faster on the outside bend there, you are going to have uh, much greater levels of erosion as a result of the fact that the river is faster and therefore it's got more energy. So around here, you're going to have greater levels of erosion and here, you're going to have greater levels of deposition. If the section here is eroding, then the river is going to very slowly over time change shape. This bit will be eroding, but also don't forget, these two bits here will also be eroding. So over time, you're going to end up with a river which is much windier than this. Now if I remember that erosion is happening on the outside bends, your erosion is now going to be in the following places. And the fastest flow of the water is going to be on the outsides of these bends, so here then here, and then here. Now it isn't going to take very long for these two meander bends here to join together and meet one another. And that might happen during times of high flow or when there's been a flood or just times when the river's a little bit stronger and those two bits have come so close together. Now the neck of the meander is so close now that it isn't going to take very long for those two bits to join together. And when they do, the river is going to flow straight across there. It isn't going to bother going all the way around the meander bend because things in nature tend to take the fastest course. Humans do that too. We'll take the easiest route possible while still achieving whatever it is we need to do. So this river is going to end up cutting across and leaving that section there completely redundant. What we've got here then is the course of the river, which has now cut itself off from the meander. And this meander loop has turned into an oxbow lake, it's been cut off. Here, you're going to get sediment just settling. If there's no movement, if that water's stagnant, then you're going to get a lot of deposition in there. And sometimes these oxbow lakes can dry up completely. Um, and therefore you might only see them from the air as a slightly different coloured bit of land. Question one, where's the fastest flow in a meander bend? The fastest flow in a meander bend is on the outside. Question two, what's the name for the force that makes rivers flow faster on the outside bend? The force that makes rivers flow faster on the outside bend is called centrifugal force. Question three, how do oxbow lakes change over time? Well, oxbow lakes become areas of fairly still water, and as a result of that, deposition takes place within them. And this could mean that oxbow lakes dry up eventually over time. They become full of sediment, and they just dry up and become another bit of solid land. And that's it for meanders and oxbow lakes.